Yo, it's me, it's me, it's the S-E-O-T-T, baby, and I'm back with you for my review of the 1994 film, The Crow, starring Brandon Lee, Michael Wincott, Ernie Hudson, it is directed by Alex Proyas. Now, yes, you may be sitting there thinking, Scotty, why didn't you do this for, on a Thursday review? I could have, I did, but... Well, one of the reasons is I'm going to review the entire, all four films. Um, another reason is uh, Lee McCoy, Drum Dumps, he did a commentary for it last night. I was unable to watch because of WrestleMania, part one, night one, whatever. And so I just, you know, watched it with this and I figured, you know what? I'll just do a review instead of waiting until Thursday, which I could have done. But I'll just do the review now, and I'll do the other ones some point this week, tomorrow maybe, Tuesday, I don't know. But, so, The Crow came out in 1994, and it has gained unfortunate, it's gained, it's a cult classic, but... And for more than one reason, I think. You know, it's a very, very good film. And I'm not saying that the controversy surrounding the film is what made it popular. Because it could have done that on its own. Because it's a very good film. The acting is all on point. Just the, the, the effects. The atmosphere that the director gives it. With the, the lighting and everything. It's a great film on its own merits. But this film has, has attained cult status. Because of the fact that its lead actor, Brandon Lee, tragically passed away on set during filming. When, I don't know the specifics, but there was a prop gun that was supposed to be using blanks. But it, a real one got lodged in there and it caused the propulsion to work. And it, when Michael Massey fired the gun, it actually got Brandon Lee to where he he wasn't able to survive. And this affected Michael Massey so much that the actor Michael Massey who played Fun Boy, that he didn't act for a year or two. He took he took some time off. You know, and you know it was an accident, but he's lucky he didn't get jail time, accident or not. You know, he fired the gun, but I think maybe because it was an accident and it wasn't exactly his fault. You know, that's why he didn't get jail time, but, but yeah. But, aside from that, even if that hadn't happened, I think this would still be considered a cult classic. Because, on the, like I said, on the acting, the atmosphere, the directing, everything on point with this film, even without that tragedy, would probably still be... You know, one of the greatest films ever made. One of my favorite films. Uh, just everything about this film. I love this film. I was quoting this film before I even put the damn thing in. For God's sake. Uh, and yeah, this is one of those VHS slipcover ones. And you take the slipcover off. And, and that. I like this on the back, though. The whole little him. It's cool. Um, but yeah, tragedy is tragedy, but I still enjoy the film. Um, the story, you know the story. Come on, do I have to say it? Eric Draven and his fiance Shelley Webster are murdered on Devil's Night, which is October 30th, by T Root and his gang. Uh, Eric himself is shot and thrown out a window. It's like, it was like 10-story window, whatever it was. And Shelley was murdered and raped. Raped and murdered, whatever. I'm not saying whatever, but I'm wondering about how, how, how I phrase it, you know. Raped and murdered, because you can't murder and then rape. It would just be, uh, what do you call it? Defi uh, desecrating a corpse or uh, necrophilia. So you can rape and murder, whatever. <laughs> I'm not trying to... I don't condone that at all. Just saying. I'm, I'm just confused on how to word it. You know what I mean? 
But, uh, yeah, so one year later, the Crow brings Eric Draven back to life to get revenge on those who killed him and Shelley. And yeah, some people classify this as a slasher film. For me, for it to be a slasher film, there has to be, like, the killer has to be, one, evil. For me, it has to be the bad guy of the film. And two, has to use a blade of some sort for most of his kills. And this, one, he's the good guy. Two, he uses a blade in one of his kills. And that's Tintin, the first kill, and it's Tintin's blades, too. But yeah, uh, and I don't consider it a horror film or a slasher film, to be honest. It's more of an action film, I think, especially since he's the son of, of Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee was a martial arts, and you know, he didn't do it. There's no martial arts in this. It's not, it's a different kind of movie. I consider this an action movie, fast moving action, so it says right here. But yeah, uh. Oh, God, I can talk for hours about this film, I think. But I don't know where to start. Uh, the music. The music they use in this is phenomenal. The song Burned by The Cure is probably my favorite song of the film. A close second is Dark Souls by Nine Inch Nails. I'm not a big Nine Inch Nails fan, but I like the song. And you're calling me. But, yeah, and... Just the atmosphere is going. If you if you, you don't notice, most of this film happens in the rain. It's raining for most of the film, and you know it can't rain all the time. But but it, the rain gives it that kind of atmosphere, like the dark kind of brooding atmosphere. This city is supposed to take place in Detroit, I think, and it's just that you know it gives that you know. Because the way that Eric is, he's depressed because what happened to him and Shelly. He's trying to regain his memories. He's on this dark quest to get revenge. And this, this, the rain and the darkness and the atmosphere, it adds to that and makes it, the film, better, I think. And then you add the music, you know, and it's not like, not music. And there's even a scene where uh, Eric is on a, a rooftop playing the guitar and he's a, like Peter Capaldi on Doctor Who. Just... Mm, and then he smashes the guitar on the amp. And that that's like his... He, he, the, that's like, he, like he's going to war. Because he knows that this is the last person he's got to kill in his quest. And he knows he's going to have to go to war to get to this person. So that's like his, his war cry with the guitar. Mm, mm, just, you know, sitting there watching this, listening to it, it's awesome, like I said, he's got to go person through person, the first person he kills is Tin Tin, eh, kills him with knives, basic, he goes to the pawn store, pawn shop, getting in to get the engagement ring he gave Shelly, because Tin Tin sold it, and he blows up the place, and one of my favorite scenes takes place after this, where Officer Albrecht, played by Ernie Hudson, shows up, and he says, move and you're dead, and Eric just turns around and says, and I say I'm dead. And I move. And he moves. And just, you know, there's, you know, good lines in this. The, the Jesus Christ joke. You know, Jesus Christ walks into a hotel. He has the innkeeper, three nails, and says, can he put me up for the night? I know if you're, you know, it might be not good if you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a churchgoer. But I've always kind of liked that scene, just, just just the way it is where, like, the guy's shooting at him and shooting at him and it's not doing anything, you know? Because it starts with, he shoots him in the hand, he goes, ah, 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 and then, it, and that's when Fumboy is like, Jesus Christ, and then that's when he does the joke, you know? It, Stop me if you heard this one, and he does the whole... I think that Brandon Lee probably could have played the Joker if he had stayed. Just the way he portrays the character, you know? He could have been a good Joker if he had, you know, hadn't passed away, unfortunately. And, you know, I, there's other actors you can point out. Like, Tony Todd, he doesn't do much in this. He's basically doing an investigation. I think he eventually dies, but he does an investigation to find out what's going on. And they conclude that the crow is what's giving him his powers. 
Uh, there's the, the um, I guess, Officer, Officer Albrecht. Sarah, she's basically an ally for Eric, but not really. She's a little kid. And that's where, she's the, you know, where we get the line. She's like, I hate the rain. I wish it would stop. And he says, can't rain all the time. And that's how she figures out it's him. And then you have Michael Wincott, who is, like, tied for my favorite movie villain, not horror. And that's between him and Cyrus the Virus from Con Air. Just, like, you get you get the linguistics and the language and the, the verbiage of um, Cyrus the Virus, who plays him. John Malkovich. And you get the bravado of Michael Wincott and that, bang, fuck, I'm dead. Just that whole kind of attitude he has. You know, I'm... I'm just here for him. Well, you can't have him. Just a whole kind of, you know. Let me make sure I got David Patrick Kelly, who plays T-Bird. Probably the most psychotic villain in this, you know. Uh, and his dad said, uh, he car speeds off the freaking, um, what do you call that? Doc. On fire, and he gets fused to his car. It's so hot. Yeah, and Skank. Skank's got to be the funniest character. In the Skank. Skank's not here. Skank's right there. Skank. Yeah. You know. Just... There's a scene where he's Skank's talking, and he's telling the story of what happened with T Bird. T Bird said, "We're gonna get rope bears," and then well, he's gone. And just telling the story, and Michael Wincott, you could tell, sitting there like this, trying not to the lot. Not try not to break up. He's like, and you can tell he cracks a little bit of a smile. Like he's trying not to crack up from the, what this guy's doing because it's just so funny. And yeah, Michael Wincott, elephant in the room. He's in Alien Three or Resurrection. I'll get to the Alien movies eventually. I don't know. Alien and Predator it's supposed to be this month, but I'm just kind of trying to do whatever. Uh. But yeah, and you get that fight between uh, Eric Draven and Top Dollar, who's Michael Wincott's character, on the roof. It's raining, of course. The fighting's an excellent fight. And he goes out at the end to be with Shelly. You know? It's the tragic love story. He's just there for revenge. And you get that scene. There's that scene where he goes to visit Elbrecht at his apartment. Ernie Hudson's standing there in his freaking boxer shorts and a tank top, or t-shirt, whatever, and he's got his officer's hat on, you still have your hat on, and then, you know, uh, and there's, you know, he touches his head, because if, if, if he touches someone, he gets memories back and stuff, and he touches them, and he sees that Officer Albert actually stayed with Shelly till she, till she died, 30 hours, just staying there, you know, that means he cared, you know, and he's doing this investigation. He he still cares because he won't tell his superior officer or detective, whatever, about what's going on. And so he gets suspended because of it, even though he didn't really deserve the suspension. He did it for misconduct or something. He didn't deserve it, but, you know. And I've watched this movie, and to be honest, I can't find anything wrong with it. Um, even even though, you know, Brandon Lee died, most of his scenes were done, and they used a stunt performer for the stuff that was left, you can't really tell unless you really, really pay attention. You really, really try to find out, find, you know, find the, the parts where he's not there. You can't really tell. Like, I, I guess the part where he puts the makeup on is supposedly not really him, but you wouldn't know. You know, it's just so... The only thing I have is the, the special effects. The part I say he gets his hand shot, you could tell it's a model hand. You could tell that the first time, and then you could tell it's digital when he goes like that. You could tell that. Other than that, it's pretty good. The running on the roof scene is pretty good. This movie is excellent. Guys, we got another rarity, you know. I don't try, I try not to do this often, but The Crow's going to get a 10 out of 10 for me. Because it's, it's an amazing film, and you guys, you know, people need to watch it because it's an awesome film. Uh, before I go, I'm going to say I'm going to do all the sequels. 
including Wicked Prayer. And I'm working on a, a new top 10, my top 10 favorite remakes. I did a horror remakes, and I'm trying to do a top 10 list of my favorite remakes, non-horror. And so far, I've only found one. So I'm trying to, you know, find other ones that I like to remake, non-horror-wise. But, you know, so, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? What are your guys' thoughts on The Crow? You know, comments below, like, share, and subscribe. Can't rain all the time.